Alright people, so we are now back, it's now time for another Law Tutorial. So by default, Law's character archetype is a poking, rushdown type of character. His main game plan is to get frame advantage when he hits you with something like a down forward 1 or down back 3, or make you respect after moves like forward 1 plus 2 and while standing 4. Well the point is, Law just wants to get in your face, so that he can keep on hitting you. And that is why he can struggle against characters with good keep out and good movement. But everything gets better once you have them pinned down at the wall. Law may not have the best wall game in the game, but his is pretty decent. And that is the point of this video, because I'm about to share to you guys some of my favorite setups at the wall. So the first wall splatting move that I like to use would have to be 1-2-3. One, 1-2-3 two, three. One, two, three is a 10 frame counter hit wall splatting string. It starts with a jab and that is why it is 10 frames fast. So your goal would be to land this at the wall as a counter hit. And that is pretty simple to set up, given that this move is already fast. So if you know that they're gonna do something that's slow that's not a high crush, you can just challenge that move with 1, 2, 3. And then you now have a wall splat. You can pretty much frame trap someone with this move as long as you have a slight frame advantage. So for example, when you're jabbing their face at the wall, some people will try to jab you back because they think that you're gonna follow the jab with a down forward 1. Let's just say that's the case. But because the jab puts you at plus 1, then everything they try that's not a high crush will just get beaten by the 1-2-3. And now you have the wall splat. So here's another example. Let's say you're pressuring them with DSS. You make them block a DSS forward 2. It doesn't matter what move you do the DSS forward 2 from, but the most common is uh, while standing 4 or even 4-3. Or even Junkyard. Doesn't matter. What matters is that you know that they like to press buttons after a DSS forward 2. And because DSS forward 2 is only 0 on block, anything that they try that is not a jab or a high crush will get counter hit by the 1-2-3. The frames do not require you to be always at plus or 0. You can still use this, let's say, at a slight minus situation, say minus 1 or minus 2. Moves like 1, 2, down forward 1, and for up 3 put you at minus 1 on block. And the move forward 3 plus 4 puts you at minus 2. So after these moves on block, if you know that they're gonna reply with something that is not a fast high, Let's say they're gonna do a mid that does not high crush, you can still frame trap them with 1, 2, 3. So aside from using this move to frame trap, there's another way to use this move. Well, the goal here is to catch the second hit of their string. Our goal is to counter hit that instead of counter hitting the first hit. So how are we gonna do that? Well, the answer is by using movement. As long as you have enough frames to either backdash or step away from the first hit, you can still try to counter hit the second hit with 1, 2, 3. Well, I hope that makes sense. Here I'm gonna show you more examples. So 3-4 is also another move that is good for this purpose. Well sure it's not as fast as 1-2-3, but it does not require a counter hit in order to wall splat. A 12 frame move is still fast enough to wall splat them after stepping.
Apparently, Law doesn't have a mid that is fast enough and safe to catch Duggars at the wall. The fastest wall spotting mid that Law has would be his back 4 free, which is the homing move. And the next fastest would be back to 1, which is the screw move. But both of them have a duckable high second hit. Back 4 free is faster, being 14 frames and all of that, and back to 1 is slower, being 16 frames but has better range. These two are the two moves that I like to use to punish the bigger whiffs at the wall. And yes, almost forgot about 3 plus 4, but this one sucks now because it is now minus 14. The only thing protecting it from getting punished is the high last hit. Also, back 4 free and back to 1 are the moves that I like using to punish dick jabs at the wall, so for me, the safest option to counter dick jabs would be to use movement rather than resorting to low parries or hop kicks. Again, if you still have good enough frames such as minus 3 or better, you are able to step dick jabs and punish them. Backdashing will also work, but I prefer stepping because in some cases, it can give you that angled wall splat, and then you can get that re-splat with a sidestep 3 plus 4. So far, the safe wall splatting mids would be back free and poison arrow, but their weakness is that they're slow. If you haven't conditioned your opponent to respect you yet, these two moves would just end up with you getting counter hit. Back free is just there to provide a safe alternative to catch steppers rather than using the duckable back four free. And poison arrow, we're about to get into that right now. So Poison Arrow along with Down Back 3 and Forward 1 plus 2 are the best pressure moves that Law can do against his opponents at the wall. But let us talk about Poison Arrow. Why is Poison Arrow so good that you need to be using it more? Well first is because Poison Arrow already wall splats on regular hit. And second, if it is blocked, then it puts Law at plus 5 to still mix the opponent up. And third, you can do it from DSS, given that you have already conditioned them to respect DSS. Now, there are different ways that the opponent can react to a block poison arrow. Remember that Law is at plus 5 in this situation, so... First, if they still want to press buttons despite them being at a frame disadvantage, a good safe move to catch them pressing would be down forward too. You can also do 1 2 3, but I would prefer down forward 2 since it also hits sidesteppers and crouchers. However, 1 2 3 is very useful to avoid getting flashed by Yoshimitsu. As long as you have enough plus frames, I mean plus 4 or even better, there's no way Yoshimitsu can flash 1 2 3, so remember that. 1 2 3 is very, very good to avoid getting flashed. So back to down forward 2. People who don't respect and people who step are gonna get wall splatted by this move. And note that the wall splat you get is a high wall splat. So you can add an extra 4 before you do the regular wall ender. People who crouch are still gonna get hit, but they will not get wall splatted. This is because the down forward 2 does not launch crouchers. But Law is still put at plus 4, so it's completely up to you on whatever you wanna do with that plus 4. But let's say that you want an option that's still gonna wall splat crouchers, steppers, and also button pressers. You have back 4 free. So if a block poison arrow puts you at plus 5, and if this one is 14 frames fast, then it cannot be interrupted by anything. But of course, this is much riskier than using down forward 2 because they can duck the second hit of back 4 free. And that is why it's a good idea to first see how they react to back 4 at the wall. So try throwing out a couple of back fours to check how they react. If you see them do the slightest duck, then you know what you're up against. You probably shouldn't be using back four free. But that also means that back turn mix-ups off the back four will not get interrupted. So take advantage of that. So the second way that they can react to a block poison arrow is by not pressing buttons at all. It means that they respect you being at a plus 5 advantage. So they can either remain standing or duck. 
So you can do another poison arrow. Either way, it's good. If they stand, you just repeat the same situation. But if they duck, then there goes their ass to the wall. If they just stand there, you can also do down back three as a low to chip them down and still remain at a frame advantage. And don't forget that you also force them into crouch. And down back three will also cover stepping. So another low that you can use is down four three. And because law is at plus five and down four three is 15 frames fast, the down four three will only trade with jabs and beat everything else that they may try, unless they duck. So like down back free, this will also track steppers should they try to step you. Dragon Hammer forward 1 plus 2 at the wall is also good. Like Poison Arrow, it also puts Law at plus frames on block. And Law has the option to go into crouch to threaten with while standing 4 into DSS2. But if you can't do the while standing 4 into DSS2 due to lack of execution, you could do wall standing 1-2, and that would also cause a wall splat. But the thing is that wall standing 1-2 is 13 frames fast. And keep in mind that at plus 3, a jab or a dick jab would trade with it. So I would recommend practicing the wall standing 4 into DSS2 instead, if you want to wall splat people who press buttons after a block dragon hammer. But if they don't want to press buttons, then you can still do the slide to knock them down. And then after that, you get your free grounded free. If they want to do get up kicks, you can just backdash and go for a whiff punish. And yes, before I forget, while standing free is also something that you can do should they try to respect you after a dragon hammer. If they block while standing free, the frame advantage that you get is too big that it gives you a free DSS mix up. So what are the good moves to do from DSS? Well, you can do whatever you want, but I personally like while standing free into Poison Arrow. You could also do while standing free into Legend Kick, or even while standing free into DSS for the low. And again, these moves are all uninterruptible off of while standing free. So aside from a dragon hammer, forward 1 plus 2, another move that would put Law at plus 3 and in crouch is back turn down 3. This move actually looks very innocent, but it's like the equivalent of Law's dragon hammer from back turn. Now why did I say that? It's because after you hit them with this move, note that it also has the same advantage as a dragon hammer, which is also plus 3, and also puts you in crouch. Therefore you can do the same options off a Dragon Hammer that we just talked about, which are the wall standing 4 into DSS2, slide, or a wall standing 3. Well, you get the point. Okay, so moving on. So we talked about the slide already and what you can do after the slide hits. But note that, of course, we can also do a slide mix-up. So the easiest mid-wall splat option from a slide feint would be to use wall standing 1-2. But the danger to that is that they can duck the second hit. Well, some really good players are able to hit confirm this move, but it is very hard. And because of that, what I do instead is the forward forward 2 off a slide feint. And how you do it is like this. The input is kinda long for me to say it, so I'm just gonna put the notation on screen. The advantage of doing forward forward 2 is that it's easier to hit confirm. So you can just do the full forward forward 2 free once you see the first hit hit. So next we want to talk about lost wall bounce moves, of course. This is not going to be a wall game video if I were to forget about the wall bounce moves. So we already know about Law's Season 4 buff in which he gained a wall bounce property off his two 1 plus 2 extensions off many moves. So earlier we talked about setting up the 1-2-3 counter hit off the 1-2 and the DSS forward 2 should the opponent try to press buttons after those moves. Well, you could also do the two 1 plus 2 extension off both these moves. If the 2 landed as a counter hit, then the 1 plus 2 is guaranteed to wall bounce the opponent. But remember, if you made the wrong read, this is punishable at minus 13 on block. And that is the reason why it is a good idea to mix it in with a 1, 2, 3. 
so the next move is the Dragon Cannon, Forward, Forward, Free. This is also a Power Crush. This move is a lot easier to set up from DSS, so you would rather do this as DSS Forward 3 instead. Well, unless you're good in timing their attacks. Very well, the armor for this move activates at the 8th frame, so in order for you to set this up, you would need to be at least at a minus 2 frame disadvantage. So you can set this up off 1-2 one, or 1-1-2 one, one, or even the multiple punches 1-1-1-1-2, one, 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 but there is actually no point now, since there is already a 2 1 plus 2 extension that also wall bounces off these moves. The 2 1 plus 2 extension is a lot safer to use because it is safer on block and it eliminates taking damage from armoring through an opponent's move. But the Dragon Cannon setup was the one I used before, before Law got the Season 4 buff. So, where else can we set this up from? Well, there is another move that comes into my mind, which is while standing 1-2. Of course, you would need them to not duck the second hit, and if you guys don't know it yet, this move is actually plus 4 on block when you transition it into DSS. So you can use this as a power crush setup for people who don't know that while standing 1-2 is safe. So the next one is something that I almost forgot to put in the list. Law has yet another ace up his sleeve. He has a wall spatting parry. Which is done by doing DSS2 off the regular parry. And there are many many ways that you can set this up. For example, my favorite one would be off the down forward 2. And remember that setup that I taught you before. Which was the poison arrow into down forward 2 at the wall. Well, if the down forward 2 didn't wall spat the opponent, then the parry will let you go for another wall spat attempt. I also made a video about lost parry before, I can link that below if you guys want to watch it. But remember that the ideal situation to use a parry is when Law is at worst at a disadvantage of minus 8. And this is because his parry comes out in 2 frames. So there are many moves that you can set up a parry from. One of them is 1-2-3. The next one is back 4. And down forward 2, I just said that one. And even DSS2. So if you ever fail to connect that after the parry, you can go for another parry just right after it. And last but not the least is the throw forward forward 3 plus 4. Only use this if they're bad in breaking throws. The throw itself does not cause a wall splat, but it still gives you a wall combo nonetheless. Alright people, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching this, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to suggest something to cover about law, just comment it down below. And yeah, special thanks to the patrons who keep supporting this channel. Again, thanks for watching, peace out.